Kundave Prati thought how to console Manamegali. As her mind was convulsed with unbearable grief and anxiety, no idea appeared. At that moment there was a loud shout at the palace gate. Vanati! See what it is! These people forget even the state of mind and body of the emperor. They cheer like this! She said. Vanati went to the front of the palace to take a peek and came back in a hurry. With great excitement, sister! He is coming! She said. Who is he? Kundave asked with a smile. He is, sister. Your brother. Kundeva immediately said, Well then, you take this girl a little further away. She said that. Go quickly. He will not leave without seeing you. I will tell you, said the younger Prati Kundave, seeing Vanatha's hesitation. When Vanatha took Manamekali's hand and went beyond, Pani Selvan came to the place. Brother! I have heard that wherever you go, people gather and shout. Bring them to the palace gate. How much trouble will it be if the cries of the people fall on the ears of the embittered emperor? She said. What shall I do, sister? Am I the only one without heartache? Even before Karakalar's Virathirumana was burnt to ashes, these people began to shout at Aromas he could pat him. I am afraid that it will become more. Even if people believe that Madhurandhakar and Kyratrasar have conspired and killed me, they will believe it. When I think of the calamities that may occur because of that, my heart trembles and trembles. Yes, yes. Amathiri don't do a single leg. Leave that thought alone. Let alone what people think. The emperor's chest will surely be torn apart. It is enough for him to think of goddess Mandakini and Kari Kalan said the youngest brat. That is why I am reluctant to run away. I am trying to talk to the people and the soldiers somehow and get their consent to give the title to Madhurandhagar. Whenever I speak, the people listen attentively. When I return, they immediately start chanting as before. I am coming here thinking that I have changed their minds. Thirukovalar Patan and Kajumbalar Velan are going and changing the minds of the soldiers. Sister. I have come to tell you about them. You should call Malay Aman and Velar and talk to them. They will not listen to anything I say. If you tell them, maybe they will listen. I've said as much, brother. They couldn't change their stubbornness. We have to find some other strategy. Sister. You wouldn't have told Velar a message. Maybe he wouldn't be so adamant about giving me a title. What is it, brother? I must tell you about the vow your friend Vanati has made. She has sworn not to sit with me in Singh Adana. Telling about that will save the great Velar the trouble of marrying me. Brother! You thought I didn't tell him that? It's already been told. Do you know what he says to that? Are you telling me to ruin a great kingdom for the stupidity of a little girl? If it weren't for Vanati, there would be a hundred princesses waiting to be garlanded in this land of Bharata. They would climb even if asked to climb a lion. They would climb even if asked to climb a mulberry tree. The commander said and gave Vanati an angry look. The girl is shaking. Aromas Hivarman smiled and said, Luckily, I didn't faint and fall down. Saying that, he looked around. I have sent Vanati on an errand, said the youngest brat. Sister! If you and Vanati are firmly in my party, we can sort it out. We will both go to the emperor. Both of these old men will obey the emperor's strict orders. And there is an obstacle to that, brother. Sembian Mathavi is standing in the way. What will our father do if he insists on contradicting what we say? Even if his mind is broken, it will go away. Therefore, I am afraid to trouble the emperor with this matter. Then we should both pray and listen to Sembian Mathavi. We should try to change his mind. We speculated that the reason why he is adamant not to tie the title to Madhurandhagar. I met him at the house of Chief Minister Anuradhar a while ago. He told the truth to Madhurandhagar today. You are not my son. When you said that, you should have seen our grandfather's face. His beautiful face, dripping with weed, 
turned into the face of a giant. Fortunately, at that time I went and joined. Really? Then what happened? said Kundave. Standing with folded hands in front of the grandmother, I said, Mother. I also know that Madhurand Hakkar is not the son born in their womb. So what? Is not the son whom they brought up so beautifully? Therefore he should be crowned. What did the great bratty champion Mathavi answer? I was back before he could answer. Brother! Didn't you say that even if Madhurand Hakkar was not Sembian Mathavi's son, he was otherwise entitled to the Chola throne? Didn't you also say that he was our father's son, Yurtamya? Didn't say, sister. Why, brother? Did you fear that our father would be disgraced because of it? Or did you think that you could talk about it later? No, sister. I knew that the hope you and I had been holding all these days about it was groundless, and that's why I didn't say anything about it. How's that bro? Yes, sister. Prime Minister Anuradha knows all that news very well. Two years after our father's return from the island of Elam, Madhuranthagan and Nandini were born as twins. So, couldn't they be CO born with us? Arulm as I said. Kundeva thought for a while and said, Grace. Knowing this, do you want to give the title to Madhurand Hagar? She asked. Yes, sister. Anyway, Madhurand Hagar is the son born in the womb of goddess Mandakini. The son who was taken and brought up by Sembian Mathavi. I have no desire to rule the kingdom. Your friend Vanati also has no desire to mount the lion. Brother. In the story of Rama, Bharata went to fetch Rama saying that he did not want the kingdom he got. When Kahan knew this, he said, A thousand Rama will not be equal to you. Let them say whatever they want later. It's enough to leave me alone for now, sister. I've finally found a strategy and I've got it in mind. I'd like to know your opinion about it. What's that trick, brother? Don't you know that the predators are massing near the child? Yes, I also know that many small princes have joined them. But I hear that it is a very small force. You say that if our Pataner and Velar go with the force they have here, we will destroy that force in three and a quarter of an hour. I have planned to avoid such a thing. Without anyone knowing, I am going to go on a horse and surrender myself to the robbers. They will imprison me. Then our Patan Malay Aman and Sinapati Pariya Velar can't do anything, right? Kundeva put his finger on his nose and marveled, that's a wonderful trick, brother. But there's a little risk. She said. What is it, sister? Do you know what the soldiers in that army will do when you reach the gathering army of the reapers? Hail the merciful Lord! Glory to Pani Selva! They will start shouting. Instead of imprisoning you, they will catch the rapists and imprison them. Aromas Hivarmar stood stunned for a while. Yes, I didn't know that danger could arise. Fortunately, you warned me. I'm going to disguise myself there as I entered this Tanjapur fort. How long will it take for the truth to remain hidden, brother? If only one person knows? In a moment, everyone will know. People from the neighborhood will come and gather. Aromazai's face shrunk. Sister, then what are you asking me to do? Why am I born in this world? To trouble others? Shouldn't I have fallen into the Kaveri and died? He said. Brother. Who saw it? Whatever the astrologers and horoscopes said is true or whatever. It seems that Irajya Lakshmi will come and reach you even if you push her not to. Such is the time of your birth. Sister. You too have joined our Patan Malay Aman? Have you changed your mind? My mind is not bored by Patan's teachings, brother. But my mind has also changed a little because of Anankari Kalan. He has written that you will fulfill all the dreams you have seen. When I read it. Kundave's eyes were filled with tears and her voice became weak. Pani Selvan bought Aditha Karakalan's paper and read it. Tears also flowed from his eyes. When he had finished reading the leaf, Kundave said, Brother. Whatever you think, 
I will tell you what is in my mind. I am somewhat relieved to know that Madhurandha and Nandini do not belong to our Chola clan. I have no desire to make someone who is not born in the Chola clan ascend the Chola throne. No matter how much devotion I had to Sembian Mathavi and Mandakini Devi, I could not let myself go that far. I could not bear for a moment more to tie the title to Madhurandhagan. Sister! Sister! What are you saying? I left saying I don't want a title in front of Champion Mathavi, Anuradhar and Madhurandhagan. I have said that in front of thousands of warriors and in front of Mahajanas. Now you ask me to break my word? Aromas Hivarman asked. Brother! You and I should be guided by our family deity Durga Parmswari. I am not clear what to suggest to you. If Aditya Karikalan had listened to my words, this kind of situation would not have happened. This fate must have happened to that Mahavira. Kundava wailed. How did you get this leaf, sister? Who brought it? When did you get it? Why didn't you tell me earlier? Arom as I said. It came to me a little while ago, Sambhavariyar's daughter brought Manamegala and gave it to me. Yes, yes, I have also heard of Manamegalai. How did she get this straw? She is there, brother. You should hear and find out for yourself. I don't know how far to believe her words, said the youngest brat. As soon as Aroma's Hivarman came in, the younger Prati had decided to place Mani Mikala in front of him and ask him to make an announcement about Vandiyadeva. In spite of all these discussions, her inner mind was thinking about Vandiyathevar being in the underground prison. Kuntava did not want to talk about him himself. She was waiting for a suitable opportunity to call Manamegalai. Now that the opportunity came, she called Vanathi and asked her to bring Manamegala too. She came with a tear-stained sad face at the time of arrival. Seeing this, Pani Selvan thought that there was a reason for her distress. Brother! It was this woman who brought the clock and the leaf. Ask yourself how this came to her. Sister, you have brought and safely deposited the last leaf written by our Damayan. For this we shall be eternally grateful to you. Before Aroma's Hivarman could continue, Manamegali suddenly bowed down in front of him. Prince! Pawnee's wealth! Is what you have just said true? If it is true that you are thanking me. After saying this, Manamegali could not speak aloud and started crying. Sister! What is this? Why is this woman crying like this? Maybe she is sorry that our Tamayan had to die in her house. No, brother! She has something else on her mind. Manamekali. Tell the prince what you told me. Kunda Prati encouraged her. Sir. I am the sinner who killed their son. Put me in the dungeon and set him free. She said while crying. Aromas Hivarman looked at Kundave with astonishment, Sister. What is she saying? Has this woman gone mad, what? He asked. She's not mad yet, brother. But she will be if you don't free Prince Valadha from his dungeon soon. She said. What? What? Who's in the dungeon? Aromas I asked in surprise. Have you completely forgotten the warrior of the monkey clan that I sent to the country of Elam, brother? Aromas Hivarman appeared for a minute as if he had woken up from a deep dream and remembered the world. Ever since he entered the fort of Tanjore, a series of incidents had occupied his attention. After the news of Karakalar's death, his whole mind was occupied with thinking about the religion that would make Madhurandhagar ascend the Chola throne. He had truly forgotten about Vandiyadeva. Now when he heard his name he jumped and said, Who? My dear friend Vandiyathevara is in the dungeon. Why? Who imprisoned him? He asked. Kuntava took the details that Manamekala had told him. Pani Selvan, who was listening to everything, said, Sister! No one can be so ungrateful as I am. I have neglected to inquire about the warrior of the Vanara clan. That is my fault. Those who dared to imprison him in the nether prison are greater criminals than I am. I know how much devotion he has to our kinsmen. 
Dot who dares to make him responsible for Caracaller's death? What kind of stupidity is this? This woman blaming herself to escape him seems to be teaching us all a lesson. I am ashamed to see this woman. Let other matters go. I will now go to the underworld and release Vandiyadeva. To the daughter of Sambhuvarayar. You choose. After saying that, he turned and walked away. When he reached the threshold, Thirukovalar Malay Aman and Kajumbalar Velar suddenly appeared there. Their very appearance created some doubt in the prince's mind. Pariya Velar placed the work which he had brought in his hand across the doorstep and stood as if to stop the prince. Behind him, Malay Aman also lowered his knife in his hand and stood ready to stop the prince from going up. Pani's Selvar, with great surprise and a little anger, said, Commander. What is this, are you going to imprison me too? He asked. Prince. Now we forbid them from going to the dungeon. If necessary, we will imprison them. Said Bhutavikrama Kesari. Pani's friend did not understand whether what he said was true or funny. But at that time he was not in the mood to tolerate fun. Therefore, in a more angry voice than before, by what authority do you propose to forbid? said. By what authority are you going to set free the one in the dungeon? said Pariya Velar. Commander. Don't I have that authority? Have you forgotten who I am? Or have you forgotten yourselves? I will not forget myself. I will not forget who you are. I am the commander of Tanjore Fort today. Therefore, you are the warden of the underground prison. You are the son of the emperor the son of the bride. Yet they have no authority to release one who is accused of killing their daughter in the underground prison. Only the emperor has that authority. Or the emperor's he who is about to be crowned has that authority. You bring the proclamation that you are not going to ascend the Chola throne. Therefore, no one can be released from the underground prison without the order of the emperor. Said Sinadipati Bhutavikrama Kesari, a large farmer of Kajumbalar child. What Velar said was true. The emperor has appointed the elder Velar as the commander of Tanjore Fort because of the escape of the small pule of Edirayan. Therefore you have no power to release anyone from the dungeon. Malay Aman agreed. Pawnee's Selvar stood silent, not knowing what to answer them. The sound of bells was heard. 